Yo, what's up, y'all? What's going on, y'all? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I want to uh, want to go live today. Um, I wanted to talk about this whole Diddy situation. Um, I got a lot I want to say say about it. Um, you know, I was going to save it for the podcast, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go live. But um, Friends of the Data on Tolbert show is exclusive again. But y'all know me. Right, y'all know who I am. You know what I've been doing over the last twenty years, and I talk a lot about celebrities. I talk a lot about the entertainment industry. Um, I talk a lot about things that go on behind closed doors. A lot of stories, a lot of situations that you know the main the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about or won't allow you to talk about. And um, historically, that's what I that's what I've done. And, you know, the Diddy situation is interesting because, you know, Diddy is one of those people that, you know, we've always known about. Right. We've always heard about Diddy. We've always known about Diddy, but we've only known the good things. Anytime we heard the name Diddy, it was about Biggie or Mary J. Blige, or any, you know, any artist you can think of that he's worked with. We've heard about the parties. And, you know, there was a video of Barack Obama, you know, saying, ain't no party like a Diddy party. Uh, LeBron James, uh, everybody you can think of has been to a Diddy party, at least in the entertainment industry. So we've really never heard a lot. We've heard little rumors and things like that in the mainstream media, but never anything like this, Right. Or have we? And I want to direct you. See, I want to. I want to talk about Hollywood. I want to talk about the industry, but I also want to talk about you. I want to talk about the masses because one of the issues I have with people is that I'm gonna break it down. But people are so brainwashed by the media that they literally believe anything and everything CNN, TMZ, MTV tells them to believe. If it ain't on TMZ, if it ain't on CNN, then it's a conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy theory. If it's not factual, and I'm using the air quotes on that, factual, then it's a conspiracy theory and it's not to be taken seriously. If it's Data and Tolbert saying it, if it's, you know, some YouTuber saying it, then it's not factual. Until the RICO hits. Until the charges hits. Until the indictment hits. Let me take y'all back about 15 years. And I've reposted the link. But how many of y'all know? Some of y'all have been following me for a long time. A long time. Have y'all ever heard of Mark Curry? Mark Curry was one of Bad Boy's original artists. Out with Biggie, he wrote for Puff, he did all types of stuff with Diddy. And, you know, went on tour with them, did the songs and all that stuff. Mark Curry, look it up. Mark Curry wrote a book. Once he got off of Bad Boy, him and Diddy fell out. He wrote a book called Dance with the Devil. And I was the very first person to interview Mark Curry after he left Bad Boy. This was 15 years ago. And people were telling me, you know, let me just pause for a second. So y'all know I used to do a lot of these celebrities. And so there was a time when every major publicist was reaching out to me to get their artists on the Data on Tolbert show. I did a lot of celebrity interviews because there was no podcasting back then. I'm just giving you some background so you understand what I'm talking about. There were no podcasts. I was the original urban podcast. So if you wanted to showcase your artist on a podcast, you had them come on to my show. And so what happened was, you know, a lot of the radio networks, Power 99 here in Philly, Hot 97, whatever the case is, they didn't want to have Mark Curry on to tell his story about Diddy. Why? Because Hollywood, the entertainment industry, was protecting him. He was not viewed back then how he's viewed now. So he couldn't go on 
your biggest radio station and tell his story about the book Dance with the Devil. So he was reaching out to a lot of these independent podcasts so that he could tell his story freely. I was one of those podcasts. I was the first podcast to tell his story about Diddy. And so what I'm telling y'all, I'm, so I'm giving you the background so you understand what I'm saying. He came on and we did the interview and he said a lot of the uh, allegations. He talked about these allegations, about these charges. They weren't they weren't charges, but about these uh, evil things, whether it was the demonic stuff, the satanic stuff that I talk about all the time, the um, abuse, things that were known about Diddy in the industry, but nobody wanted to talk about. And again, this is all in the book. This was all in my interview. Not yesterday, not this week, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. So listen to what I'm saying clearly. Everything you guys are talking about right now on social media, I was talking about 15 years ago. Mark Curry was talking about 15 years ago. So my issue with people is that they hated on me. My point was, they down. Why are you? Why are you hating on Diddy, bro? Why are you hating on Diddy? Why are you? Why are you trying to take down a black man? Like, what do you? What do you mean? I'm not. I'm just doing an interview. This is Mark Curry, who's been around Diddy, Gene Deal. How many interviews has Gene Deal done? The bar, the bodyguard of Diddy. The whole time, about all those years, Gene Deal was the bodyguard of Diddy. He's been on Art of Dialogue. Uh, I don't know if he was on Vlad TV, but he's been doing a lot of podcasts. But people don't listen. Why would you not listen to Gene Deal telling you all these same things? But now that the Rico hits, now that the racketeering has hit, these allegations, these indictments of it. Now everybody wants to, oh my God, Diddy's a monster. Diddy just got a lifetime achievement award at the at the VMAs. What was it, like last year? He just got a lifetime achievement award. We could say the same thing about Donald Trump. We could say the same thing about Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, Jay-Z. These people are all evil. Who remembers the show... I did back in the day on, um, well, I've done many of them, but Blasphemy and Entertainment, where I talked about the evil nature, and this was, that was 15 years ago, you know, the evil nature of the entertainment industry. Who remembers the Cat Williams show I just did on the industry? I just did that a couple months ago. I just did the Cat, when Cat Williams did his interview, when he talked about all this stuff, I came out and did a show where I broke down all of these celebrities who are evil, who are criminals. But this was before the allegations. I'm reposting as they pop up in my memories. I, I repost them. So all I'm saying to y'all is y'all got to stop being sheep. And I'm, that's no disrespect to anybody. But we are conditioned as a society to follow the masses and, and follow the master and believe whatever they tell us we should believe. Now, did we see Diddy, you know, blatantly dragging Cassie, beating her 100%? We saw that. But guess what we all also saw? We also saw R. Kelly pissing on a 15-year-old girl 25 years ago. We saw that with our own eyes. I bought the DVD, the VHS. I bought it. From the vendor, street vendor. He was selling for 20 bucks. I bought it. And so what we got to understand is that we have been conditioned to see things. We, to, to, we will see things, but have been conditioned to ignore them until the master says it's okay to believe it. We knew R. Kelly was a criminal. Why when, the, when VH1 came out with the documentary, oh, now all of a sudden R. Kelly's a monster. R. Kelly's all of a sudden a monster. What you mean? What? Diddy's a monster now. Well, he wasn't a monster two weeks ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was just on the breakfast club laughing and joking. Now Charlemagne and Envy and all them want to act all brand new. Like they want to, like they're being told to do. They're being told these things. You can't be cool with Diddy anymore. They tell you, don't you understand? Let me tell you something. 
you know, podcasting is still relatively new, right? Be very careful about dismissing independent media. You really need to pay more attention. And we're doing it more as as podcasting becomes more popular. And I was just talking to someone about this a few minutes ago. When you are independent, I'm going to really give you some game. A lot of people don't know this. When you are independent, meaning you haven't sold your soul for fame and fortune. See, the thing about me, I never sold my soul. So... But I was in a very unique situation where I had access to celebrities. A lot of these people have access to celebrities and are celebrities because they sold their souls to become celebrities. But there are very few people, there's a select group of people where you might have access to a celebrity, but you haven't sold your soul to be able to do the things that they've done, but you still might have access and so that's why when you listen to Drew Hill on the Day Don Tolbert show, when you listen to a lot of these celebrities, the questions I've asked them, they're a little bit different than the questions Nori might ask them on Drink Champs or Charlemagne might ask them on The Breakfast Club. You ever notice that? That there's always been something a little bit different about Dadon Tolbert than some of these other guys interviewing. I'm sure you I mean, have y'all noticed that or no? And and what I'm telling y'all is that everything is not a conspiracy theory. Every person talking about things that CNN doesn't talk about is not a conspiracy theorist. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I just talk about things from a biblical standpoint that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know. I'll give you another example. Um, you know, Bill Cosby, guys, you know, a lot of this stuff, let me, let me, there's so much stuff out, and this is all off the top. Normally I have an outline, I'm just jumping around, but, because I wanted to talk to you the other day. But I want to talk about Bill Cosby because I'm seeing a lot of similarities. When you piss off, the mainstream media, when you piss off the elite, they'll make you pay. As Prince, as Michael Jackson, as Bill Cosby, as Diddy, as R. Kelly, see, as Harvey Weinstein, the list is endless. But Diddy messed up. Now, let me say this. I'll tell you where he messed up in a minute. But let me say this. When you look at the entertainment industry. Certain celebrities, most celebrities, are protected. They're protected. They protect who they want to protect. They protect them until they don't. They protect them as long as they're going along with the agenda. If you're fine with the agenda, you don't push back on the agenda, you're fine. We love you. The world loves you. Will make you rich, will make you famous, your album be number one, your movie will be number one, everything will be perfectly fine. But the moment you start to push back and go outside of that agenda, that is when you are punished, that is when you are no longer protected. If you guys are unfamiliar, Diddy had a very, you know, he had the the, the Ciroc deal, he had to deal with the Delion company, the liquor, he went against that, he wanted to design, first of all, he started by complaining about it. He started by complaining about it. And then he eventually, he went public with it. And it got louder and louder. And then he wanted to dissolve the partnership that he had. Now, now they weren't happy about that. He filed a lawsuit. Next thing you know, you know what I mean? Now here we are. Bill Cosby. Same thing. You know, you guys might be familiar with the whole issue he had with the network. Um, Michael Jackson, Sony. Next thing you know, he's complaining publicly, publicly. Next thing you know, he's no longer here with us. Uh, I mean, the list is endless. So all I'm saying to you is this is how the industry works. This is how it works. When you piss off the wrong people, they will make you pay. And they don't care who you are. They don't care how famous you are. So you guys got to understand, when you become a celebrity, 
There's all types of information that they keep on file from your past. They keep that stuff on file. So when you step out of line, now we can release that information. Now we can file these charges. Now we can put that into the lawsuits, the civil suits, the indictments, all types of stuff. That they have that stuff ready. They got the lawyers on speed dial, the prosecutors on speed dial. Because it's already they're already waiting for you to step out of line. They were already waiting for this. They were already setting Diddy up for years. And he's not the only one. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but a lot of people are stepping down from very prestigious positions. Kevin Lyles, Adrian Wojnarowski. You know what I'm saying? Like this it's a, it's a lot more. Just I'm not going to run everybody down. I don't have any notes in front of me. I'm not but just do some research. There's a lot of people in high-ranking positions that are stepping down the week that Diddy was uh, was arrested because they don't want to be next. They don't some people that are have been very vocal, you haven't heard anything from Kanye West lately. We haven't heard anything from Jay-Z lately. A lot of these people are very quiet. These people are being more and more bold in the industry on the high end because it's like they, they're not playing any games anymore. The level of tolerance is at zero. The moment you step out of line, anybody can be taken down. Weinstein, you know, you don't play by the rules. See, I never took any oaths, so I can say whatever I want to say. You see, I didn't. I can say whatever I want to say, but some of these people, once you are in the system, so to speak, you you, you know what I mean. You can't say what you want to say. I'm gonna give you some examples. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Uh, some of y'all might remember Diddy hosted my 30th birthday party in Philly. Some of y'all might know. That's what. So I'm. I'm just telling y'all. I don't just say stuff. I don't. I've been around celebrities since the early 2000s. Some of y'all know that. Some of y'all were there. Some of y'all were at these parties that I was at. So all I'm saying to y'all is this. I had, uh, you know, the media is funny. The media, the mainstream media is funny. Um, you know, I think back, I had uh, Drew Hill. I had, uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Tao. Tao, Tao from uh, Drew Hill on, the sh on my show back in the day and he was talking about Drew Hill and how some of the things that he'd seen in the industry um, and why he is no longer in the group why he left the group um, and, and we talked about these things, if you, if you guys can catch my drift, a lot of the satanic things, the Illuminati, Woody I didn't have him on the show but he's also done interviews about different things he's seen in the industry um, Trinity 5-7 from the gospel I had her on my show what 15 years ago and we talked about some of the things that they'd seen in the industry uh, you know Selena Johnson I interviewed back in the day uh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head there are a lot of people who are very open Umar Johnson I had on my show you know what I mean what probably like 10 years ago 8 years 9 years ago um, and we talked about the industry and so all I'm telling y'all is that and I'm not going to be on long but I want y'all to just understand don't wait until the charges hit for you to decide oh this person is bad again I interviewed Mark Curry 15 years ago and he wrote a whole book and people didn't want to hear it people weren't checking for that interview why? Because it's data on top. But let him go on CNN and tell that same story about Diddy. It's a different conversation. Let me ask you all this. Where's the question? Or excuse me. Where, where are all the questions for, you know, people like Steve Harvey's ex? You know, Dwayne Wade's ex. Um, R. Kelly's ex. You ever notice that, like, certain people never have a voice in the mainstream media you ever, just, you ever think about that have you ever really thought about that like certain it's like wow how come they're only ever on youtube how come you see like there's a reason for that 
because certain people are protected. And the, the, the thought process is, well, people won't really take them seriously if they're only on blog talk radio or only on YouTube. Nobody will really listen if unless it's, you know, uh, what's the dude? Uh, Harvey from from TMZ recording it. And that's not right. I speak more truth than anybody. But is my voice as big as anybody? No. But you know and I know, I'm as real as it gets. The difference between me and somebody like Charlemagne is I'm not, I haven't, I don't have an agenda. I don't, I'm not pushing anyone's agenda. You, you understand? I haven't sold my soul for millions. I haven't um, taken an oath to go along with a particular plan to protect certain people or to attack certain people. And all you got to do is watch them. Donald Trump is another one. How does the world go from loving Donald Trump one minute to everybody hating him the next minute? That's by design. That's because they told them to do that. How does everyone go from, I mean, literally loving Diddy one minute to the next? Everybody hates him the next minute. That is by design. And that's not to say that they're, he's innocent. Be clear, Diddy is not innocent. But where was all of this hate for him 15 years ago when I did the interview with Mark Curry that detailed everything that we're talking about right now? Jay-Z, guys, is not innocent. Y'all know Jay-Z was dealing with Aaliyah right around the same time that R. Kelly was, right? Y'all do realize this, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all think that the only pedophiles out there, the only, the only black pedophile is R. Kelly? Y'all really think R. Kelly is the only black celebrity that like little girls? Come on, man. Come on. They were passing Aaliyah around. Diddy, Jay-Z, R. Kelly, Dame Dash. Come on, man. They were passing her around. They protect who they want to protect. Why do y'all think it takes 30 years to put to lock these people up? It doesn't take 30 years. It takes 30 years for these celebrities to, to come to the realization that they're going to do what they do to piss the elite off and then they get punished for it 30 years later. You had your time in the spotlight. You decided to do something you weren't supposed to do. So now we're going to punish you. Did I just to make it plain? Diddy was guilty twenty years ago. R. Kelly was guilty twenty years ago. Harvey Weinstein was guilty twenty years ago. Guess what? Bill Cosby was guilty twenty years ago. But it's not until they piss people off that the charges were filed. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying to y'all? I give you an example. O.J. Simpson, a lot of people believe he killed Nicole. I don't know if he did or he didn't, but let's just, that you know, the, the common belief is that he killed Nicole Brown Simpson, right? But that's not what he went to jail for. That's not, he was found innocent of that. But was he innocent of that? Probably not. But he went to jail for some going back to get his property. Like they call, what is it, uh break in an entry or whatever they got him on they gave him like 30 years for going back to get his property stolen merchandise or something like that they get you on what they can get you on john Gotti was guilty of a lot of things murder all types of stuff they end up getting them on what tax evasion <laughs> you know what i'm saying they got to, so all i'm saying to y'all is they get you how they can get you when they can get you or when you piss them off but we as a, a, a society, we have to stop drinking the proverbial Kool-Aid and, and start to think for ourselves. You, you understand what I'm saying? Think for yourselves, guys. Don't just dismiss that podcaster 
or that YouTuber or that blog. Why? Because it's not politically correct or it's not factual. Tasha K, some of y'all might know her, some of y'all might not like her, but she is a good journalist. She is a good journalist. She has put out things. She put out the Will Smith dude. Where's the Where's the dude that she interviewed that talked about what he saw from Will Smith? Nowhere. He's on somewhere on YouTube, right? Why? Because guess who's protected? Guess who's protected? People are protected until they're not. I'm not telling y'all anything I have not said 20 years ago. And y'all got to start opening your minds to understand this stuff. Is Diddy a monster? Yes. But y'all loved him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A couple weeks ago. Y'all, I mean, you did. He was just hosting the VMAs last year. The VMAs just aired last week. He literally hosted last year. Right? And so all I'm saying is, why does it take you know, a charge being filed before people really start to believe what we've all known this entire time. Think about it. I see y'all listening, man. Um, you know, like I said, I wanted to go live because as this, as we get closer, you know, they're denying this man bail. They're denying him bail. I was debating with some people online about whether or not that's right. I don't think that's right, to be honest with you. Um, but again, they don't want this man out. We have a, um, a law in the United States that says you have to have reasonable, be allowed reasonable bail unless you're a flight risk or you're a risk to yourself or a risk to others. Diddy has offered to put up 50 million cash assets. Um, surrendering his passport, selling his plane, ankle monitor, bracelet, house arrest, whatever you want. They said, look, he said, I will do whatever you want me to do. Just let me come home, you know, to spend this time at, with my family. They said, nah, bro, you got to sit in jail. 50 million. I don't know how much you guys know about the legal system, but I've never heard of that. I've never heard of, of, of bail being set at 50 million, nor being offered and then denied. That's a lot of money. I don't know too many people that are just gonna forfeit. See, I don't, bail is so that you don't flee. Because if you flee, you forfeit your amount of bail. If you, I'm just saying this for people who may not know. So if Diddy put up 50 million, and he decided to hop on his jet and just be like, yo, I'm out then that means he loses everything that he put up as collateral. The 50 million being the, the biggest part of that. You think Diddy's gonna walk away from 50 million to go flee? Maybe, I don't know. But that to me seems a little unreasonable, especially when he already said, I'm gonna throw on the ankle monitor. You can stand outside my house. You can guard my home. You can, <laughs> you can put video surveillance on the house, whatever you wanna do. I'm not leaving. They said, nah, bro. You got to sit. Does that seem fair? Especially to someone that everyone knew. So let's talk about the charges real quick. Let's talk about what charges are we even talking about. So from what I understand, we're, that he's being charged with sex trafficking. Uh, I know he has some guns in the house. He has some guns in the crib with the serial number. So that's automatic. You're already going down for the gun. I don't know why somebody of his level stature would have illegal weapons in his home but he did supposedly allegedly um and then sex trafficking and then racketeering you know i don't know maybe he's guilty of racketeering may i don't you know, sex trafficking human trafficking uh, i don't I'm, we're gonna have to see 
Do I believe he's guilty of some things? Yes. I don't know what they're going to end up putting on him. I don't know what evidence they have. I'm telling y'all this. I'm telling y'all these things so that you can be aware of them to watch. Don't just go with whatever they tell you. Can I give you all an example? And I talked about this a few years ago with the Bill Cosby thing. A lot of times what they charge you with is not what they actually get you on. Like, so when Bill, the Bill Cosby scandal hit, right? They had 30, 30 women, 40 women, 50 women. They all came out and said, Bill Cosby drugged me. Bill Cosby did this. Bill Cosby did that. Okay. So where are the charges at? Where's the evidence at? There is none. What did, does anybody know what Bill Cosby went to jail for? Just show of hands. What did Bill Cosby go to jail for? He went to jail for, not for drugging 30 women. That's not what Bill Cosby went to jail for. He didn't go to jail for raping 50 women. Bill Cosby went to jail for raping one woman, Andrea Constant. That's what Bill Cosby went to jail for. He raped Andrea Constant. Well, who was Andrea Constant? Andrea Constant was a woman that he was having an ongoing affair with. I believe it lasted a few years, meaning he had sex with her multiple times over the course of a two or three year period. Yet, Bill Cosby went to jail and his whole life was ruined his whole legacy was ruined over having sex with somebody he had been having sex with for years. Does that, how much sense does that make? How much sense does that make? So all I'm telling y'all is that, you know, a lot of times what we think is not always, and a lot of times what we know is not what they ultimately get you. So pay, I'm just telling you this to, Pay attention to everything. Pay attention to this stuff. Don't just take what they say and go with it. Because a lot of this stuff really doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Donald Trump. Donald Trump was loved by the world. Inducted into the WWE Hall, Hall of Fame. A couple years before he ran for president, now all of a sudden he's this racist, he's this, he's assaulted this woman, he's that, he's that. And it's just like, pay attention. Don't just go with what CNN tells you to believe. CNN is worse than anybody. CNN is the one, and I've been in journalism my entire life. CNN is one of the most corrupt and, and liber, liberal, biased media news sources in the world. So you can't just listen to what they tell you and take it as fact. Take it as gospel. I'll give you an example. Has has Do I believe that Donald Trump has done some inappropriate sexual things with, with women over the course of 30 years? Yes, I do. Just because I know he's a narcissist, I know I I but just I just believe that he has done some things. However, of all these quote unquote accusations and all these um, assault victims, oh Donald Trump did this, Donald Trump did that. Who was the one woman that he was actually found? criminally and civilly liable for it was I don't know her name but it was one woman that he supposedly raped or excuse me not raped assaulted in a dressing room in broad daylight in a shopping mall in, in, in a dressing room in a shopping mall that, and he, they got him on a what? $90 million judgment? $100 million judgment? Something like that? Civil judgment? The woman said that Trump raped her. The jury said, we don't believe that Donald Trump raped you. 
We just believe he fingered you. He grabbed you by the pussy, maybe. That's the that's the big that's the big term. He 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 stuck his fingers in you. Well, hold up. You said he raped me. He raped me. Jury said, nah, he, we don't think he raped you. He just fingered you. So we're not going to give him a rape charge. We'll find him not guilty on the, or not criminally liable on the rape. We'll give him this judgment, though, for a hundred million because he fingered you. Well, hold on. Which one was it? Did he rape you or did he finger you? You said rape. The jury said fingered. So somebody's lying. My point is this, a lot of times what they, what we know you've done is not what you end up going down for. We know R. Kelly raped that little girl because we saw the video with her, with him pissing on her. That girl was 14, 15, but that's not why R. Kelly's in jail right now. That's not why, y'all know that, right? Most people don't even know. Most people are, are, are blindless freaking sheep. Don't know a, a damn thing about anything. You know what I'm saying? They literally watch CNN every morning when they wake up. And whatever they tell them is what they believe, which is crazy. But y'all do realize that's not why R. Kelly is in jail right now. He's not in jail for pissing on that little girl. He's in jail because the, the, the producers decided they wanted to come out with surviving R. Kelly and interview all these women. So then they got all these charges. They put all these charges. Now, again, did he do those things? I don't know if he did them or not. But whatever the proof they supposedly had was nothing like they had when that videotape came out. And you know why he didn't go to jail when the videotape came out? It's the same reason Diddy didn't go to jail when, when, when he assaulted Cassie. You think they nobody had that tape? You think nobody had that Cassie tape? Why did that Cassie tape just come out after Diddy decided to sue the liquor company? Do you does do me a favor, log off if you think that's a hundred percent coincidence. If you think there is no connection with Diddy suing one of the most powerful liquor companies in the world and dissolving that partnership with them who has made him as rich as he is if you think there's no co if you think there's no relation to that lawsuit and everything that we see happening to him right now just log off don't even worry about it cuz you 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 don't I'm the wrong person to listen to. Like, if you don't, you know what I mean? You're listening to the wrong person if you think that's a coincidence. You need to go turn on Fox News or CNN or or, or The Breakfast Club or some, some other, you know, mainstream media controlled, you know, situation that wants you to just follow whatever they say. But y'all should get it by now. Like I said, man, y'all should, y'all should, but I don't want to talk forever, man, but um, pray for Diddy, uh, pray for any victims that might exist. Uh, according to the lawsuit, the indictment, there are, I think I saw one victim on there, um, and a bunch of witnesses. So we'll see what else they add to that, but pray for everybody involved. Pray for those kids, pray for the twins, pray for that newborn baby that he had or not newborn, but you know, the young, the young daughter he just had recently. Um, pray for everybody, man, because this, believe it or not, guys, is just one of many distractions that we're going to see as we get closer into the into this closer to the election. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, you know, I it's it's weird, you know. I, and I'm, I'll just give y'all one 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 example. If you look at somebody like Cardi B, right? And Cardi B goes on these interviews. And Cardi B tells people, I used to drug men. And I used to rape men. And I used to steal from men. 
This is what Cardi B said. I don't know if you guys heard that, heard her say that, but she's admitted these things. She's admitted that she used to drug and rape men. She's admitted this openly and blatantly and then steal their belongings after she drugged and raped them. She's admitted to being a gang member, gang banging. She doesn't want to be called Cardi B. She wants to be called Barty because she's a gang. She's a blood, allegedly. And this is the person that Kamala Harris said, oh, I love Cardi B. I think she's great. Our possible next president said someone who is admitted to openly drugging and raping and stealing from men is great. Oh, okay. That's really great, Kamala. That's really wonderful. That's great that you think she's a great role model. And my point with this is everyone's going to vote for her. No one's going to think twice about that comment. You know what I mean? Nobody, you know, is is calling for Cardi B to be arrested, indicted. She's openly admitted to being a gang member, drugging men, raping men, essentially doing worse things than Bill Cosby has ever done. Think about what I'm just just think about what I'm saying to you. Cardi B has admitted to doing things worse than what Bill Cosby served three years in jail for. Show of hands. Does anybody think that that's okay? Why isn't Cardi B being prosecuted, you might ask? She's already admitted to doing things worse than what Bill Cosby has done jail time for. Why? Because she's protected by the industry because she is not going against the establishment. See, people are above the law until they go against the establishment. The law doesn't matter. The establishment is what matters. When you follow the rules, you got a number one album, you got millions of dollars, everything is fine. You can't deny what I'm saying to you. Listen, I'll say it again. Cardi B has admitted to doing things worse than what Bill Cosby has denied doing. And she's walking around free as a bird. Everybody loves her. Whereas Diddy, he betrayed the establishment. So now he's got everybody love Diddy. Y'all know y'all love me, right? Some of y'all hate me, some of y'all love me, but people hated me. They asked me, why are you hating on Diddy? 15 years ago when I did the interview with Mark, they said, why are you hating on this man? I said, bro, how am I hating? I'm just doing an interview with somebody who was on Bad Boy. They didn't even want to hear me do the interview. Can I tell you one more? I'll tell y'all one one last story, man. Y'all ain't got nowhere to go, man. Where you going? (laughs) Listen, I'm going to tell y'all one more story. I'm giving y'all the realness. Forget everybody else. I'm giving you the realness. I interviewed the real Rick Ross. The, I was the first person to, and y'all know who Rick Ross is? You know the rapper Rick Ross, but I interviewed the real Rick Ross, the movie who American Gangster was 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 based on. Uh, some Many people think the, the, the TV show Snowfall was based on him. Um, trafficked a lot of, a lot of cocaine. I interviewed, I set up the, original the the an exclusive interview with him when he was still in jail right he was still in jail when he got out the interview was already set up i had the very first and only interview with the real rick ross on the day don tolbert show you can look it up and um many people were like why are you doing that interview why are you who is that guy that's not no real rick ross that's that's fake he's fake that's probably bs now, fast forward 15 years later, everybody knows who the real Rick Ross is. Everybody knows his story is not fake. But my point is, the hate that I got for that interview was real. The hate that I got for the Mark Curry interview was real. They called me BS. They said, Mark Curry, why, 
Why is Mark Curry hating on Diddy? Oh, he's just he's just jealous because he's not rich like Diddy. He's just jealous because he didn't blow up like Biggie. But the same things Mark Curry said about Diddy 15 years ago are the same allegations Diddy is now in jail for. So again, and I'm going to close with this. Just don't be a sheep. You know what I mean? Don't just follow blindly. <laughs> don't just believe everything that they want you to believe. You know. Don't, here's the thing. We look at people like Dame Dash. Right? Dame Dash fell out with one of the most powerful people, Jay-Z. Ask, I don't even have to ask him. Do a little bit of research on exactly why Dame Dash fell out with Jay-Z. Okay? Do a little bit of research on that. Because the real reason will make you look at Jay-Z a little differently. Now, Jay-Z hasn't got the charges on him. Jay-Z doesn't have any allegations on him. Jay-Z's quiet as a church mouse right now. But Jay-Z ain't innocent. You might want to bookmark this live in a couple years, revert back to it. And we, we might be having a different conversation because who would have thought three years ago we'd be having this conversation about Diddy? As crazy as it sounds, having this conversation about Jay-Z two years from now is how crazy it sounds having this conversation about Diddy three years ago. But ask Dame Dash what Jay-Z was doing with Aaliyah. Ask Dame Dash when Jay-Z really met Beyonce. Hell, ask Dame Dash how old Beyonce really is. <laughs> I mean, all this stuff is fake news. Guess what? In case you didn't catch my drift, Beyonce was underage when she met Jay-Z. I'll say allegedly. I don't want any lawsuits, but that's the reality of it. I mean, I'm old enough to remember this stuff. I remember when Destiny Child really came out. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the industry. I know what's happening. See, people who don't really know, they don't they, they want to debate with you and stuff. But you can't debate with me. I was interviewing these people. I was around at that time. So all I'm saying to y'all is your favorite people are not innocent per se. They're just protected. There's a difference between being innocent and being protected. Everybody you see out here running around, they got dirt on them. That's why at any time they can put a lawsuit on them. At any time they can put an allegation on them and your whole career is down the drain. At any time they can drop that lawsuit. They got these people, these quote unquote witnesses on speed dial. Oh yeah, this person touched me. I, I was here. Now everybody's coming out the woodwork. Where were all these people three years ago talking about something? Oh yeah, these stories about Diddy. Diddy did this. Diddy did that. Bill Cosby touched me here. Th Come on. Bro. Like, where were you 20, 10 years ago? Forget 30. Where were you seven months ago? What? You know what I mean? You got that phone call. All right, we need you. You ready? The time we talked about, all right, well, that time is now. You ready to tell that story? Stand by. Wait for directions. Next thing you know, so-and-so has a story to tell. They pop up on this, this this podcast or this on TMZ. Oh, yeah. So-and-so touched me. Did he touch me? Did he traffic me? Come on, man. Now, again, is Diddy innocent? No. But are we going to hear about Diddy doing some things that are 100% bullshit? Absolutely. I just want to let y'all know that. Is he guilt? Is he innocent of everything? No. But is every charge they put on this man true? Don't believe it. So, but like I said, man, we got to, I don't, I don't, I am the type of person I like to wait. I like to let things marinate. I wasn't even going to go live today. I like to wait. I don't just jump on things. Y'all don't see me on here going live every five minutes like a lot of these weirdos out here. They got to be first. I don't need to be first. I'm cool. I just want to talk to y'all intelligently. You feel what I'm saying? I want to talk to y'all like, like in a way that makes sense, that's logical. These people just hear something, they jump on it. 
No, I want y'all to use your cognitive abilities, the same cognitive abilities that Joe Biden lost many years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Use those cognitive abilities and y'all were still going to vote for him. Don't let me, I'm not going to forget about that. That's a different conversation though. Y'all were going to vote for that man. If that man did not drop out of that race, as weird and as and broken down as he looks right now y'all would have in november gone to those polls and you let the media convince you that donald trump was a worse candidate than joe biden who doesn't know where the hell he is or who the hell he is and y'all were gonna go in that booth and press joe biden which is a, a which is 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 diabolical but again that's a different conversation man y'all let the media control you Stop letting the media control your lives. Think for yourselves. Use your brains. Everybody is not what they say they are. I bet if an allegation on me came out tomorrow, y'all would start just believing it. And it probably will because I'm doing this video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you now, don't believe it. Don't believe. Y'all probably would believe it on your own mom, your own father who raised you. Oh, well, I mean, CNN said, I don't know. I got to go with CNN on this one, bro. Y'all sell your own children up the river because CNN told you to. CNN is the real devil. Mark Curry wrote a book called Dance with the Devil detailing everything Diddy did. And I interviewed him on the Dayton Tolbert show. And now y'all are looking at me now like, like, oh, he didn't, I don't know. 50 cents just he just i'm gonna watch the the, the documentary uh, documentary that 50 cent produced for netflix i'd rather listen to that because netflix said it it must be true <laughs> i done saw the whole r kelly video myself but because now bh1 did it now now r kelly is guilty he wasn't guilty 25 years ago when you with your own eyes saw R. Kelly pissing on that little girl. Y'all did not give a damn. <laughs> Y'all still were bumping that, that B2K. Bumping that 12 play. Some of y'all are here because of 12 play. Your kids are here because of 12 play. And y'all didn't care. But because VH1 said he did it. Sorry, Kells. I got to hate you now because they told me to. Sorry, Trump. CNN told me I got to hate you now. Sorry, Diddy. Your kids are cute, but I got to hate you now because they told me to. I love you right now, Jay-Z. But three years from now, <laughs> sorry, Hov. <laughs> I got to hate you. Come on, man. Don't be that guy. Do not be that guy. Don't be that young woman, man. But look, man, um, follow me. Daydon Tolbert Show. Um, ask Daydon on YouTube. Uh, add yourself to the Friends of the Daydon Tolbert Show group. Uh, you know, subscribe on Patreon. If I didn't, I told y'all I'm moving the show over to Patreon. So a lot of these lives, I'm going to be doing straight on Patreon. So follow me over there. Um, DaydonTolbertShow.com. And um, like I said, man, I'm, I'm going to talk to y'all later, man. But follow, the, follow these developments. And as you follow, think for yourselves. I'll talk to y'all later.